Kim from Milling About. Uh, Mike's behind the camera. And um, we're going to show you uh, a lot of our different modifications. We've been in our rig for a year now. Uh, we've got some motorcycles, so <laughs> hopefully you can hear me. Um, so we've been in it a year, and we've done a lot of different modifications and a little bit of additions and different things. So we wanted to show you all those different things. Um, and this is our 380 FL uh, Solitude Grand Design, and we've got a lot to show you. So uh, Mike's going to show you a couple of things, and I'll show you a couple of Okay, hello again. This is one of our outdoor modifications we did. So I was tired of taking this panel off to get back here to look at the uh, water systems. So basically undid all the screws, put some hinges on the other side. There you go. A nice wall to go back, check everything out. Kind of cleaned up all the wires and hoses, zip tying everything up, make it as, uh, just as clean as possible. So. But that is a nice little uh, area there. I'm going to do some more modifications because our last trip, everything banging around here, uh, busted out uh, the screws in this wall. So basically I just need to put a, um, a bracket hitch to connect these uh, walls together. So that will keep this wall pulled forward like this. I believe the new grand designs with the uh, barn doors has the little uh, vertical pin hinge that you can put down into a bracket. So I think that will work well here as long as we have it nice and tight. So, yep, that's our modification for this area. So this is my personal favorite modification that I did. Since I'm a big cyclist, we took our rear passenger storage, made a homemade bike rack to carry four bikes. As you can see, the big storage area. Pull this out. Come on over here. So you can see down here, I've got three, uh, three quarter inch piece of plywood, stapled on carpet on the top, just like it had in the rack. And then I bought some fork mounts and wheel mounts. So you can essentially mount four bikes in here nice and secure. The only issue is my bike is a little tall to fit in with the bar end, so I can keep it like this temporarily to roll it in and out, but when you're traveling, you do want to mount your fork. But as you can see here, you just have the four bikes alternating, handlebar, front back, front back. You your four wheel mounts. Just take the uh, seats out and make sure you have quick release uh, seats. Got it. Fits in there like gloves. Like I said, you want to make sure they have height for all the bikes. Slide that in there. Lock in place. And as you can see here, still plenty of clearance on the sides. I even put up posters, some different accessories in there, and still have plenty of clearance around for the bikes. So that is our bike rack modification. One of our big things that we got done to survive the winter in Colorado is our RV skirting. Um, so this was done by our RV skirting, um, and we can come over here and show you that. So it goes all the way around. It has PVC pipes down underneath um, that kind of holds it down. It's all nailed down so it stays uh, nice and tight. So they come out and they uh, measure everything, find out exactly where you need to have holes in the skirt, and um, then they take it back, they take those measurements, and they make it in their shop down in Colorado Springs. We have a couple of extra little holes um, for like the hose, and this is for our water hose, but we ended up just running it underneath. So. We just ran it underneath. Yep, so we fun. didn't have to have that hole. Um, so, it was done by Kurt Miller and the Miller family. So, well, little plug there for RV skirting. Yep. Colorado Springs. They did an awesome job. Uh, we've actually taken this off a couple of times and reinstalled it. So, it's um, this is kind of the third time that we've reinstalled it. Um, one of the great things too is our Dyna Trap. Um, 
So we are not affiliate, so any links that I put in there are not, we're not making any money off of them, but I, I'm definitely going to show you or share some links for the different things that we've bought. The Dynatrap has been great. Um, it's a mosquito catcher, moth catcher, and it, um, <laughs> we've actually emptied this bottom part a few times and there'll be a bunch of mosquitoes down at the bottom. So we'll maybe in a future video show you how we empty it and everything. And you'll get to see all of the dehydrated mosquitoes in there. Yummy. <laughs> it is attached by these little um, turn thingies. <laughs> Twist locks. <laughs> Twist locks. It does have the zipper at the bottom that you can unzip and undo this flap here so that it um, you can go into this little front cap area. We're able to keep a lot of different things in there, um, keep it out of the weather. So these have big heavy duty plastic zippers. Twist locks hold it up. Yep. And it just opens up. And these twist locks are screwed right into the fiberglass. Not this opens up like a garage. Got a little shed area in here. You can store things all out of the weather. And you're good to go. And with the skirting, uh, we have temperature sensors we put under there that we can monitor from inside. And it keeps it a good 20 to 30 degrees warmer than the outside uh, air temperature. So last winter when it was getting down in the teens, uh, at night, it would be usually in the 40s inside the skirting area. So, yep. so it's been really beneficial for us. Um, show you a little tiny mod that Mike made here. Um, he velcroed our our repellent to the side because he was tired of it falling down on our table and stuff. So, <laughs> so one of the mods that we did when we first moved in about the RV lock. So. We didn't like the fact that everybody had the same keys, um, so we decided to get the RV lock. A lot of times, RV lock will have a sale on it, so we'll kind of we watched for the sale and we bought it as soon as it went on sale. And it was a pretty easy install. Um, just took the one out that you had in there, put that one in, and it was good to go. I think it probably took me about a half an hour to install it, so that one was pretty easy. All right. Go ahead and go inside. We've got some Probably step covers in here. The things that Mike did here, um, we have cats, and <laughs> they like to scratch on the the um, screen door here. So we ended up getting a piece of plexiglass, and we just used some Velcro and Velcroed it to there, so that when we're traveling, we can take it off. Works like a charm. It does. So one of the things that Mike decided, we had linoleum through the entire um, the entire RV. Aside from the, uh, the slide. dining room slide. Yep. So the first thing that Mike decided is to actually put carpet in. I know a lot of people don't like carpet and they end up taking their carpet out. Um, but we ended up putting it in so that it's a lot more comfortable on our feet. Very easy. Looks nice, easy to vacuum. Just laying on the ground, just use a double-sided uh, carpet tape underneath the seams on the edges, and you're good to go. So we did a living room. One of the big mods we did, here's our kitty, is we cut pieces for the stairs. We did that after we put the carpet in. That made a huge difference for those slippery stairs. After I'd fallen down them a couple of times. <laughs> yes, on a regular basis. And as you can see, we did these couple stairs also, and the bedroom. So as we come in the bedroom, kind of see we put a strip along here. We had an extra piece, just put a strip along the side there. There's the original linoleum floor that's all through the rig. So we have two teenagers, and as teenagers need, they need their privacy. Um, one of the things that we did at first with the modification in here, we were able to get like a brown sheet and just hang it from some little clips across the room. One of our cats loves to pull on those, so would kept pulling your, the sheet down. So what, what we ended up doing is these are some heavy duty curtains 
from Walmart. And shower, shower curtains. No, they're they're actual curtains. Regular curtains. Regular curtains. <laughs> I You'll have to up, cut that out. <laughs> I ended up sewing on that brown curtain to the bottom because it didn't quite reach to the floor. So there was a good six or seven inches that they could see under the curtain and they didn't like that part of it. So I ended up sewing that to the bottom. I ended up sewing the two curtains to each other this way. And then if you come in here, come on in here. This is actually a little room in here. Kind of hard to see with the camera. See here is a curtain. So I ended up sewing two curtains long across the wall and then two curtains like a T so that it created a little room. I know it's a little hard to see, but it created a little room. Little daughter. <laughs> this is Heather. And um, so it kind of gave them a little semblance of privacy in here. Especially um, for changing, getting ready in the morning. Yep. And how do we take those curtains down? So to take them down, they're just up here on command strip hooks. We take down the T here and then just go across here and pull the rest of it down. And we keep these folded up nicely up here. Not really nicely. <clears throat> Bald in a ball. <laughs> Bald in a ball. I try to do it nicely, but right now I can't. <laughs> and we just keep them right up here by the fireplace. So it opens up the living room. As you can see, this will be our son's room. So he has his little private area. So one of the first things that we did was take the couches out. When we even got it, we didn't have the couches in here. We told the dealer to take them out. We didn't want them. We didn't want to have to deal with them because we knew we weren't going to be using them. Um, my son has always liked to sleep on the floor. So we didn't put anything in here except a carpet and um, then he's got a bunch of pillows that he likes to lay on. So as you can see, we just put some padding and carpet at the bottom there. So he can lay on there and then he has all of his pillows and blankets on top of that. And something else I did was I got some pieces of carpet, use uh, double sided carpet tape and put that up along the walls here. That way when he's leaning back his head and his back, he's got a little bit of padding around his area. And we haven't had any problems with mold, mildew, and stuff. As long as it's open, you get airflow. You don't have any kind of condensation on there. So because he um, doesn't have any kind of place to put his um, belongings or anything like that, we ended up getting these benches from Walmart. Um, and we are going to be doing a different mod. He's decided he now wants a bed. Um, so we're going to end up making another bed that has an opening that they can slide bins inside of so that... We can get rid of one of these benches, we can kind of make a little bit more room in here, and he'll have a lot of room inside of his bed. We're also going to make a new bed for Heather, our original bed that we made for her. It's really tall, and all of her stuff is actually inside where you would have to lift this part up to be able to get to. Um, so having this part of it, we have discovered it's a little bit harder to get into. She has to take her mattress and all of her stuff off the top. And so it's a little bit harder to get into. And we did end up having a little bit of condensation and mold inside of her bed because there was no airflow. Um, we didn't make any kind of a, a hole in the back side of it. Since we've discovered that, we did make holes in the back and we haven't had any problems. But we, we're going to remake her bed as well so that she can just slip in and be able to pull her stuff out as well. With more airflow. Yep, yeah, with more airflow. So that will help. When we first started uh, RVing, the only thing that we had were these curtains that we could pull across and completely close them in if they wanted to. Um, Ryan got a little bit claustrophobic with that uh, and wanted some extra space, so that's why we made those bigger spaces in there. Um, one of the mods that Mike has actually done is the um, the valances will show on you on Ryan's because she's over there. Window valances. <laughs> so the window valances, they came all the way down and had those little things on the side. Those things come off very easily, so we just pulled those off and shortened these ones. Mike's going to actually be doing another modification on this, so we'll show you that as well. 
Yeah, because this is not that secure as you can see. So we will put some new side braces there, get those screwed in the wall, and then they'll all be shortened that way those side braces don't go all the way down there in their way. As you can see, they're pretty, pretty cumbersome there. If they're trying to lean their head back in the wall, here it is like that. So I know that Mike was, um, we love our, our chairs here. I love my side table over there. But one of the things that Mike really wanted was his own table. So we were able to find a small table like this. Um, didn't you do some sanding and stuff on yeah. it? I believe this is from Amazon. Yeah. It was squared off, so I rounded the corner, sanded it. Basically, it's just a small, uh, narrow table. It's got a little magazine holder at the bottom. That's just perfect. Keep uh, some food items, Kleenex, TP, whatever you need. <laughs> so, we did travel cross country, and this stayed right here, and it didn't move. So, yes, it's very, um, it's very, very sturdy. stable. Um, we had some stuff in there that we left in there, and everything stayed put. So, that was a really nice thing that stayed uh, where it was supposed to be. <laughs> So come on down in the kitchen, we'll show you some different things that we did in the kitchen. Um, one of the big things is this nice little shoe rack we figured out. We used to keep our shoes in the bench over there and wanted to get really stinky. But um, trying to dig your shoes out, it was too much of a hassle so we ended up getting this little thing. So one of the big mods that we did in here um, was Mike was able to order these little tray things off of Amazon and we can expand our kitchen by quite a bit. I mean it does make it a little bit hard to move around in here but doing dishes we're able to use all of this space and if I'm cooking something large, yep there is another one under there. There we go. Yeah. So we have four tables. Yep. And if we come under here, it's kind of hard to see with the video, but this board across here just mounts with a few screws right into uh, the side of the island. As you can see, this little hinged uh, brace, you've got uh, four screws in each uh, hinge there. So the brace just swings out until it's flat, and then table just swings right down because there are the, uh, the main hinges for it. So if we swing that back up, get that brace there, come up the top, you can see it's a fairly, fairly big area. There's my hand. So when you're doing dishes, you can put all the dirty dishes over here. Got a couple tables along here. And when we have the clean dishes over here, you've got the one there. So if you get an aerial view, that just about doubled the real estate of the island. We love it. That was probably my favorite mod in the kitchen here. Um, so one of the things that you do have to be aware of though is when you do have these down and you have your table leaf down and you pull that slide in, it is going to push the tape, the island just a little bit. So it tips it just a little bit. Just barely. Just barely. Um, so we didn't notice that until our last trip. When these are down, this the side of the uh, lip right here where it hinges down will push just right against the top part. It doesn't hit the island, but it hits here and just basically snugs the island up. So it just moves it over maybe eighth of an inch. Yep. That's it. We haven't had any problems with yep. that. So one of the things that we did have an issue with, um, the Grand Design um, faucet that was in here. Um, we did have an issue with it breaking. Uh, we turned it one way or the other and it just came, kind of came off. Now we could have gone to Grand Design and said, hey, fix this for us, but we were planning on replacing this anyway. So we did go to Lowe's and we got our new um, faucet and when we installed it, we made sure to turn it this way. The thing that irritated me the most about our old one is that this part of it was over on this side and you'd get water everywhere all the time. Um, we did zip tie this basket here, so we didn't have to take it down when we're traveling. Uh, it's a nice little basket to be able to hold all of your stuff in here. Um, so one of the other things that Mike did when he did these parts 
is a leaf holder. So we just grab our leaves when we're ready to do dishes and we slide them right in here. You do have to have this down when you're doing this and they stay in there. Um, you can put them in there when you're traveling, but we didn't. We just kept our leaves up in here and they didn't bounce out. I know a lot of people have issues with them bouncing out, but we didn't. That's mainly for dishes. Uh, I did hang a couple command hooks so we can hang up our mic uh, convection microwave shelf. And you got room for both leaves in here. When I built this, you do want to taper the side pieces of wood here. That way it angles out and so the leaves will lean against there so you can grab it and pull it out. If we were to do something different with this mod, um, we would make more of just a... A couple uh, boards going Yeah, across. boards like this so that way you can sweep under it and get stuff out from under there. Yeah. You can still get in there, it's just a lot harder to get in there. Yeah, and we, we may still do that. That's only held in by four screws here. So I can just take that, uh, that was actually an old TV tray uh, topper that we used. We could just put a couple boards across that way it still braces the uh, leaves but like you say you can get in there and sweep and clean a little easier to get stuff out. So the um, grand design comes with so a small garbage can under the sink that's definitely not enough to keep any kind of garbage in so we ended up getting one of these um, narrower garbage cans that can just snug right up against there Got your regular step on there. Mm -hmm. Still plenty of room to walk by without tripping. Unless you're my wife, then that still happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm clumsy. Um, so one of my other favorite things that we did is this um, command paper. It's just the... Um, it's basically just wallpaper. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the vinyl stuff that you put on there. And so we were able to cut it nice and put it on all of the paneling. So as you can see, it gives that, that old wood rustic look. I took off all the uh, handles here on the drawers, cut that, put them on the faces, and then just punch holes and put the screws back in. So a nice clean look. And it really brightened it up in here. Brightened quite um, a bit. And so the uh, color kind of matches the uh, island color a little bit. If I was gonna get a different kind, we did see one at Walmart that had like it almost like a stone look to it. Yeah, I liked that one, but I really like these ones too. The other thing that I did was I got these this um, I guess it's a shoe rack um, it's a shoe from rack. Amazon, and all of my spices go in here because these spices were taking up so much room in my cupboard in my pantry. I couldn't get a lot of stuff in here, so this is the best thing. Um, might put some. Um, carpet tape on the back to kind of keep it where it's supposed to be but it doesn't stay. doesn't really work well um, so. but I did cut a hole for the door handle and so you can get in there just fine we don't need to show them though. and as you can see it just uh, <laughs> just hangs here you got one two three four five rows to hold spices and as you can see it's they're uh, Pretty spacious for shoes, so you have places for like salt and pepper, you can put them side so by it side. Really fits your big ones as well. Yep. Um, big things you got like creamer, different things you can keep in there. So very nice. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's about it for our kitchen. Um, one of the things that we did do also when we first moved in is we got rid of the uh, chairs that were part of our um, dining set and got some benches. Um, so these are storage benches. You flip up plenty of room. Normally we have one bench on each side so you can have two people sit on each bench. They're all nice and padded on the top. But due to COVID and Kim working from home, she's got her office chair over here so we're able to just stack the two. Have a nice little perch for the uh, cats to look out the window and then my wife can do all of her work here at the table. Okay. That's the joys of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so we did hang up um, our jackets here on our little hooks. We do have to take the jackets down um, when we Man, pull the slide in so that they don't yep. get stuck. As you can see, there's plenty of clearance between the slide and the hooks. You just don't want uh, the jackets that are catching. Right. So we have four hooks on the top, four on the bottom, so we can hang up eight jackets here. Kids can be down there and have plenty of room put that one down so he doesn't trip on it. Yeah, that was a very nice mod.
<laughs> so um, one of the other things that we did is we came in here and I don't so, know if he can get so in So this here. is one of the coat closets. Yep, this is a coat closet that became our bookshelf. So we have a little bookshelf in here and we kind of need to adjust it a little bit because it is loose and kind of broke down when we were traveling. So it just kind of gives us a little... Lots of books, photo albums. This is like our little book room. So yep. good place to keep all that. And of course the bottom one. We it's kept coats. we kept the uh, <laughs> towel rod or the uh, coat rod in there. Plenty of room for coats. Have a nice container for hats, gloves, things like that. So we keep all of our kind of rarely used coats in there in our winter coats, and then we'll swap them out with the jackets in the winter time. So I, I think that you've noticed probably as you're walking through, we have a lot of <laughs> a lot of shelves. <laughs> Mike just did the Tim Taylor thing, hitting his head on the yes. I Okay, so I know that you've probably noticed that we have a lot of shelves. Um, we really just got uh, the little black shelves from Amazon that we were able to um, use command strips. Yep. Traveling around, we didn't have any problems with them falling off. Uh, we do take all of the stuff off the shelves. We're not um, going to leave all of the glass stuff up there. Um, they're just nice little uh, lightweight plastic shelves. A few command strips that go on the back. Uh, no problems. Yep. Um, all of the paintings and all of the stuff that's on the walls, we were able to leave those up. They're all connected with command strips and none of them fell off the wall while we were traveling. And we drove through like Chicago roads and some pretty rough roads. So yes. that makes me feel good. These are not going to fall off. Yeah. yeah, most of these are actually held on by command strip, the big uh, black Velcro strips. So that's actually a little stronger than just having the uh, command sticker. So the double. one thing that did fall down is uh, Mike put in a sound bar up here. Um, and this one did fall down just because of the way that it's angled in here. Mm -hmm. um, but this really improved the sound on the TV oh, yes. having our sound bar. Yeah, the thing little, that didn't little. fall down is the DVD player. <laughs> yes. This is attached up on the ceiling with those black uh, Velcro strips. and. Mm -hmm. This stayed up here through all of the bumps, all of the um, shaking around and everything, and that stayed on really good. The only bad thing about it being up here is when, so when you're trying to actually put your DVD in there, it's a little bit tight to get it in there. Yeah, but um, it works. But it works. Yep. So, so that was the sound bar just kind of wedged in there between the TV and the roof. And the little Roku unit right there basically just wedges there and kind of keeps it nice and secure here except for when you're traveling you do want to unplug it and take that down so another thing that we did take down um, take off when we first uh, started was this cover a lot of the grand design 380 fls will have the kind of protect um, cover that you can hide your little valuables and stuff in we discovered it was easier to take that off and keep our stuff kind of down in there so we can leave some of this recessed. stuff up here when we're traveling and it won't fall off yes in fact all this stuff so we have our stereo here that we use command strips and velcro that along the front edge and the side had no problems left that up traveling not a problem our little space heater uh, that just stayed there no problems and the uh, little uh, shelf with drawers we did take the little solid yeah. off <laughs> yeah, of course, all the uh, little items you just take off, just pack away, but all the uh, big, more permanent items stayed on there just fine. So, so one of our other mods that we did um, is the we put little balls inside of here that kind of makes the air go through a lot easier. And Mike did a mod on our air conditioner. We'll, I'll put a link for the video for that as well. And those balls are just uh, semi-circle uh, kind of door stoppers, right? half rubber door stoppers. You get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Yeah. Work very well. So we will share the link for um, the AC mod to make it a lot quieter. It, and it also forces a lot more air through the actual vents. Um, makes it a lot cooler in the living room. You can turn off the front air conditioner and just turn on the back air conditioner here. And it'll force that air further forward and make it a lot cooler in the front. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to run the front here. Yeah, much. especially if you close these vents in the back, you get more airflow in the living room and then you could just run the back one while you're watching TV. So, so back here in the bathroom, we've got a lot of different stuff that we did back here. Um, 
So the first thing is we've got our towel holder that just goes right over our back and door back here door so, we can... so we can keep all of our towels out to dry. Um, we do have our, we have two cats. So our cat box is actually in this closet. So we were able to cut a hole and put the um, cat, door. cat door in there. We did have to take the cat door off because we have a new kitten that didn't like to, didn't know how to get in there. We're going to put it back on and see how she does. So, um, but if that doesn't work, we're going to take the door off again. Yeah. Just cut that there. Yep. And if you want to open the closet. So here's our closet. So this is the washer dryer closet. Obviously we left the shelves in, got plenty of room for cat box under there. All your animal supplies. You got cat food, litter and things. And then this is like our broom closet. So we have our portable vacuum here. It stays plugged in the wall, so charges the battery. Got a mop. We've got our, uh, we just kept the uh, hanging bar up there. And we've got the pool noodle uh, stored there that we put in the shower when we're traveling. So. And there is a motion light in it, it just needs a new battery. Yeah. So we just keep our hamper in front of the door there and not mm -hmm. block the cat door. Yep. So That's we very... can put our dirty clothes in there. So nice. So um, we did, we used to have these little bars down below, but the cats keep kept grabbing onto those uh, washcloths. So it's yep. so a place for hand towels, all your wash rags. And those are just the uh, plastic command strip uh, or command towel holders, I believe. Uh, the issue ha we have with this is these bars were a lot wider than the width of the door. So I basically just took a jig, uh, little hand uh, saw, just measured, just shortened the bars, and it was good to go. Yep. So the other thing that is really nice is this little thing up here. Um, if you put your hand up here, you can feel the heat and when, in the winter time, the cold coming in there. Um, this little, it's just, again, from Amazon, it's just a little styrofoam with some reflex sticks on it. We did end up taping just a strap to it so that we could pull it down uh, and not have to try to get our fingers under there. And it just fits right in there. Just nice and snug. Nice and snug and keeps all of that. Um, hot air and cold air out, mm -hmm. so we're good there. As soon as you pull that out on a sunny day, you just feel a rush of heat coming in there, and then that reflectus is almost too hot to even touch the skin, so yeah. it works very well. So the other thing that we did, um, we've got in our shower here, we did put in one of the Oxygenics shower heads in here. Um, it, does, it is a little bit bigger than the original uh, pipe work in here. So you do have to kind of shove it in there to make sure it doesn't fall on you. But it really helps. Um, I, I noticed a big difference um, with the water pressure and everything with it. It's got more pressure, uses less water. So especially if you're going to be uh, doing any kind of boondocking, uh, mm -hmm. that's a must to, yeah. to be able to conserve as much water as possible. So behind you is we've got a couple of different things that we did. Mike put in, installed one of these um, toilet paper holders and he installed it with just the command strip hooks and was able to get it in there and it's nice and secure in there. Um, <laughs> it's it's actually labeled as the toilet paper holder with the phone holder. <laughs> yeah, so if you want a little phone holder, there you go. <laughs> yep. And then we also have a little shelf that we put in here for, um, we have a composting toilet, so what we end up doing... Um, number one. <laughs> number one. Uh, what we do is we fill up this cup and just pour it in there and just to kind of rinse out the tubes and stuff. Um, we've got our spray and this has like a little um, thing that you put on top. So I'll just open that part of it. So you've got the little cover. Um, if you do do number two, there's a handle that you put into the back side of that and just stir the, the and, stuff up. And we will demonstrate that. So here is your stir handle. And you just stick it in here. It has an arrow to the direction that you're going to stir it, and you just stir it up. Yep. So that just Clockwise. takes care of everything. And then you just stick it back up there. So I do have a video of us installing the um, composting toilets. We have one in here and one in the half bathroom, and um, I'll put a link in there as well. So um, is that all of our mods? I believe so. I think so. 
we've done a lot. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and ask questions down in the comments. If you have any comments, go ahead and put those down there too. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and like to us and that's it. We will talk to you later. Yep. Thanks for joining us.